All right, so today we're going to talk about mole conversion. So here we're just doing simple mole conversions. So some of them can be one step, some of them can be two step, and some of them can be three step. So the first we're going to talk about is our mole town. So the way that we read this is we have moles in the center. Mole is just a numeric value that we use in chemistry to represent another number. So for instance, when we talk about dozen, we automatically think of 12. In mole, that kind of, in chemistry, mole kind of stands for the same thing. But the difference between mole and dozen is that depending on the units that we're coming from, mole means something else. So there's a few units that we have to be aware of. So first is our mole that we're going to become very familiar with this year. Next is our particles. So particles means either atoms or molecules. All right, so here we're talking about either atoms or we're talking about molecules. The way to get from moles to particles is by using this number called Avogadro's number. This number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. This is not a number that you need to memorize, even though you probably will because you'll use it so often. But if you look here in the periodic um, table in your reference table that you'll receive on your test, the very first thing says Avogadro's number and it says 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles per mole. This is telling us that for every one mole, no matter what the element is, no matter what the compound is, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those particles for every one mole. All right? Now let's go to mass. So converting between moles and mass is going to be a little bit more tricky. The reason why it's going to be a little bit more tricky is because when we're dealing with compounds and elements, the number that we're going to use for each element and compound is going to change depending on what we're taking the mass of. So first off, the units for mass is going to be grams. So you might see problems that ask you find the mass of this element or compound, and you might find problems that say find the grams that are within this compound. Either or, no matter what the problem says, grams or mass, you're going to be going this route. Okay. So going from mole to mass, mass to mole, you're using this thing called the molar mass. Molar mass, the units for that are grams per mole. All right, so if we go back to our reference table, if we turn to the periodic table, we're going to see that underneath each element, there is a number. That is the molar mass of that element. So what we're going to be using as our conversion factor here is our molar mass. So if we are trying to get to the mass of boron, for instance, our conversion is going to be 10.81. All right? Okay, so the last route that we are going to be concerned with is our volume route. So here, just like when we were using Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, that's the number of particles in a mole. When we're dealing with volume, we always have to know that it's 22.4 liters are within one mole. And for volume, just like it is with particles, it does not matter what type of element we're talking about. It's always going to be 22.4 liters is equal to one mole of that element. When we're talking about volume, we are only talking about gas. We will not be doing much with this conversion, this unit. We're going to be talking more about this unit when we get into the gas unit.
So don't worry too much about this yet. Just know that the conversion is 22.4 liters and the unit for volume is liters. Okay, so I'm sure you've noticed how I have not talked about this atom adventure that I have over here. So some problems are going to require you to take an extra step. So we have moles here and then we have particles. Like I said, particles means either atoms or molecules. Now, if we have a molecule, an example of a molecule could be H2O. All right, so water is an example of a molecule. When we look at water, we see that we have hydrogen and oxygen in it. So a molecule is anything that has more than one type of element bonded together. So these two, we write them together, they're bonded together. So when we have a molecule and the question asks us for the number of atoms that we have, we need to take this one more step. So the way that we're going to convert is we are going to use the number of atoms in the molecule. This route, this entire route, will work completely fine for whether you have a molecule or an atom. It doesn't matter. If you just have one element, like say if you just have Fe, it will work completely fine because when you get to this next step, when it asks you the number of atoms in the molecule, it's just going to be one. And anything multiplied by one is just going to be the same. But this becomes very important when we have a molecule because we first have to multiply it by Avogadro's number and then we have to multiply it by the number of atoms. And then that will give us the number of atoms in whatever they started us with. Okay, so when I talk about conversion factors, your molar mass is always going to be next to your grams. This might be something that you want to write down. Your molar mass is always going to be next to your grams conversion factor. Here, when we're talking about volume, your conversion factor of 22.4 is always going to be next to your liters. Okay, it's always next to your liters. Avogadro's number is always going to be next to the particle. So whether that's molecules or that's atoms, Avogadro's number is always going to be placed next to the particle. Now, if we're using Avogadro's number to get to molecules and we have to go that next step to get to atoms, the number of atoms is always going to go next to the word atom. All right, so let's do some example problems. All right, so the first one says how many grams are in 4.73 moles of Fe? So if we think about our mole town, we had mass on the top and moles um, in the middle. So we're trying to get from moles to grams. So if we go back, oops, if we go back to our mole town, right? In order to get from moles to grams, our conversion factor has to be our molar mass. And if you remember, our conversion factors, the top always has to be equal to the bottom. So we need to keep that in mind while we're doing this. Okay, so we're going from grams to moles. Oh no. Just like other conversions, we are always going to put what we're given in the top left corner. We know that we're trying to get to grams and we started off in moles. So we're going to put our mole unit right here on the bottom and you're going to put your grams unit on top. All right. Now I said before that you're always going to put your molar mass next to the grams because what this is telling us on the periodic table, there, this number is telling us how many grams of that particular atom is equal to one mole of that particular atom. 
So here we're talking about iron, which is Fe. If I look there, the molar mass of Fe is 55.85. So that's what I'm going to put right here. And so I'm saying that 55.85 grams of iron is equal to one mole of iron. So here, you can notice how my um, units are going to cross out. So I'm left with just grams of Fb, which is what I'm trying to get. So if I do this calculation, I'm just going to multiply across. I need 4.73 times 55.85, and I'm going to get an answer of 264 grams of Fe. So this number went a little bit further than just 264, but if I notice, there are three significant figures in my problem, so I have to make sure that I have three significant figures in my answer. All right, so this next one is going to be the exact opposite of this. So now you're starting with grams, and you have to go to moles. Why don't you try this one yourself? I'm going to put the answer up and make sure you get this, the same answer that I did. Alright, so rounding to my correct amount of significant figures, the answer that I got was 1.30 moles of calcium. Make sure you can get that answer. If you can't, please come in for extra help. I'd be more than happy to walk through this problem with you. Okay, so now this question is asking us how many molecules are in 4.10 moles of CH4. So if we go back to mole town, Remember that we're going from moles to molecules. So we're starting in moles, and we have to get to molecules. So molecules is in particle part, okay? So when I cross over this road, I notice that my conversion factor here is Avogadro's number. Okay. So I'm always going to put what I'm starting with in my top left. All right. A way that I can uh, simplify the word moles is just writing M-O-L. I don't know if you noticed in the last problem, I always wrote moles or grams and then put what I was talking about. So each and every one of your answers should have a numeric number the unit, and then what it is of. So whenever I see an answer on a test, make sure you have those. If you do not have that, you're going to get points taken off. All right, so now we're starting with 4.1 moles of CH4. I'm trying to go to molecules, so let's follow our units first. If I have moles of CH4 and I know I need to get out of moles, I'm going to put moles of CH4 on the bottom and I'm trying to get to molecules. All right, so when I went to my mold town, I noticed that my conversion factor was Avogadro's number. So like I said, you're always putting Avogadro's number next to the particle part of your conversion because I'm saying that I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CH4 for every one mole of CH4. So this number here is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply across. It's really important that when you're doing this, you use parentheses. If you don't use parentheses, you're probably going to get the wrong answer. So I suggest putting everything in parentheses so that you make sure that your answer is correct. The answer that I got here is 2.45 times 10 to the 24th molecules of C, 
H4. So there's your answer for this one. All right. Notice how I don't drop my scientific notation. If I don't include this times 10 to the 24, that completely changes my answer because 2.45 is very different than 2.45 times 10 to the 24. So make sure you include that. All right. Now this is gonna bring us to the next step. So it asks how many atoms are in 4.10 moles of CH4? So if we look back at our mole town, we're given moles, but then if we look at our problem, CH4 here, that's a molecule, all right? So if we get to particle part, we're just talking about molecules now, but the question asks us for atoms. So now we have to go one additional step to get to atom adventure, okay? So we're going from moles to particles, particles to atoms. The conversion factor from moles to molecules is Avogadro's number. It's the same exact thing as we did last time. Now to get from particles to atoms, we need to multiply by the number of atoms in the molecule. Okay, so here it's gonna be the same exact setup. So I'm starting with 4.10 moles of CH4. Now I have to get out of moles and go to molecules first because CH4 is a molecule. That is my, going to be my first step here. So I'm going to put one mole of CH4 on the bottom and then 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CH4. All right, so now I'm in molecules of CH4, but this question is asking me for atoms. The way that I figure out how many atoms are in this molecule is I count up how many atoms I see. When I look at carbon, I only have one atom. There's only one carbon there. But when I look at hydrogen, <coughs> excuse me, when I look at hydrogen, this subscript of the number four, that tells me that I have four hydrogens. Make sure that you're only applying that four to the element that is right next to it, okay? So I have one carbon plus four hydrogen, so that equals five atoms that I have. So now I need to multiply. This is gonna be my third step, but my second step now, I have five atoms for every one molecule of CH4. All right, so if I multiply that all out, and I'm multiplying because it's all on the top. If I had something on the bottom, I would be dividing. <coughs> so the answer that I got here is 1.23 times 10 to the 25th atoms. All right. All right. So you already talked about our diatomics. Make sure that when you're doing a problem, you notice if you have a diatomic in your problem. Because if you do, that's going to change um, how we're going to approach the problem. So our diatomics, you can remember, with Brinkelhoff. So if we say that word again, you notice that there is an O in it, which stands for oxygen. So oxygen is O2, all right? This one we'll do together, and then this next one you can do on your own. So we want to know how many atoms are in 0 0.7 moles of oxygen. All right, so here we have more than one atom, so we know that we're going to have to take the long route again. So we have to go from moles to molecules to atoms. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. This marker smells really bad, which is why I'm coughing. Okay. Okay, so I'm starting with 0 0.71 moles of oxygen. 
Now I need to get some molecules of oxygen. So I'm going to multiply by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of O2. And I know that I need to get out of moles, so that's what's going to go on the bottom. Okay, so this is telling me that I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of oxygen for every one mole of oxygen. All right, now I'm asked for atoms. Here, I see that I have two oxygen. So I'm going to multiply it by two atoms for every one molecule of O2. Now I'm just going to multiply across. And I'm going to get All right, so I get 8.6 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Notice how I only have two significant figures here. And I did that because I only have two significant figures in my problem. Why don't you try this next one on your own? I'll put up the answer and make sure you get the same answer as I do. Alright, so here's the answer that I got. Make sure you get the same answer. If you didn't, please come in with questions. I'd be more than happy to go through it with you. Okay. Alrighty. So now we have to do... Shanna Creek, come to the main office. By Shanna Creek, please come to the main office. Thank you. Just ignore that, guys. Okay. How many grams of H3PO4 are in 3.22 times 10 to the 24th molecules of H3PO4. So we're going from grams all the way to molecules. The only way to do that is to pass through moles. So one thing that you have to realize, this is a village, right? So we got, or a town, sorry, it's a mole town. So in order to get to each stop, you have to take the street. So that's what these lines represent. You cannot take any back roads. So you cannot take roads that are not made for you. So the only way to get from grams to molecules is to first go from mass to mole and then mole to mass. Oh, sorry. Mass to mole and then moles to particles. All right? Okay. So I'm always going to put what I'm starting with in my top left. <coughs> Alright, now I need to get out of molecules and go into moles. So what I have to do is I have to follow my units, right? So I have molecules up here, so I need to get out of molecules down here. Okay, so I know that I have to go to mole, so that's going to be my next thing that's going to be on top. I said before that you're always... Um, going to be putting Avogadro's number next, <coughs> next to the molecules or next to the particle, right? So, yeah. <coughs> I am so sorry, guys. <coughs> so I'm going to be putting 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules on the bottom, and that's for one mole. 
Okay, so now just pretend this is continuing down here since I ran out of space. So now my next step, I'm in moles and I'm trying to get to grams. The way that I get to grams from moles is to calculate the molar mass. The way that I'm going to do it for H3PO4 is I need to add together the molar mass of three, three hydrogens plus the molar mass of one phosphorus plus the molar mass of four oxygen. Okay, so that's going to be 1.008 times three, because there's three of them, plus one phosphorus, and the molar mass of phosphorus is 30.97 plus four oxygen, which is 16.00. When I add that all together, it's going to come out to 97.994 grams of H3PO4. <coughs> so that's where I'm going, but I need to get out of my mole unit. So I put one mole on the bottom. Here I'm going to do 3.22 times 10 to the 24th molecules divided by Avogadro's number times the molar mass. So I get an answer of 524 grams of H3PO4. Notice how I round into three significant figures since I have three significant figures in my problem. Alright, so that's one you're going to do on your own. What I want you to notice is that it says how many atoms of SO3 are in 64.3 grams of SO3. So when we look, we're trying to get to atoms inside of a molecule. So that's going to be all the way down here at the bottom. And we're starting at grams, all right? So you're going to have to follow this entire pathway. I'm going to put the answer up and make sure you can get the same answer. If you can't, please come in and see me and I will help you, all right? So the answer that I got for this was 1.93 times 10 to the 24th atoms. Make sure that you have three steps set up in this problem, and then you can get this answer. If you can't, please come in. All right, I hope this was helpful. And I'm sorry about all the coughing. I'm not going to use this marker again. <laughs>